So welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm going to hand over to Adam as soon as he's ready. Yep, I'm ready. Excellent. So this this is the uh, user experience team meeting, and Adam's going to be running it. So I'll uh, just switch to his presentation. OK, somehow. Oh, oh I'm on the wrong slide. And then I'm going to give Adam um, the. Can I control these slides or how does this work? Yes, yeah, so what I've done is I've made you oh, the okay. presenter, Adam. Okay. okay, okay, I see. So um, I don't know if you know me. My name is Adam Bellis. You can see me in the forums and, and chats and GitLab as this triangle with the glasses. And I am somehow got into this position of speaking of about UX issues in the Inkscape. And I was asked to speak today about something related to the to our UX team. And I was thinking that Inkscape as a whole has a has a lots of UX problems, but I think the biggest problem is the is the process we develop uh, Inkscape in general, and I think we can we can improve this by by being more active or I would say with better approach. So yeah, so I would like Inkscape's UX be better by trying to be more involved in the process from the beginning and. Yeah, so basically, I s there is there is this feeling that UX and UI is just the buttons and uh, the padding and this kind of stuff, which is not really true, and it's just a part of the bigger problem. So I, I would like to introduce this thinking more inside of the Inkscape, and yeah, so. This is just small, small differences. What is UX and what is UI? But basically, UI are just visual elements, just the buttons and fonts and uh, visual layout and clarity and hi hierarchy and stuff like that. But UX is really user experience, which means even these paper cuts and um, experience in general. It's very important, and we need to think about this before we start developing anything. Like we should try to solve issues and problems before we start to do any code. So, yeah. So, how could we improve this? Um, basically, by introducing uh, design thinking, which is in, in simplest terms, is basically process of thinking or way of thinking by defining the problem and then like knowing what is the core of the problem. So basically we are trying to deconstruct this problem on the smallest level, like what is the behind, why is, because somebody can, come in and just say, oh, I want this button to be somewhere else. And we shouldn't just take the button and put it to the new place because somebody, but we should think about why somebody has this need of moving this button. So we are trying to find the root of the problem. And after that, if we know the root of the problem, we should ideate on this problem and and think of the solutions and in yeah and after that we have the solutions we can then we can start code so yeah and then after you after you have a code you have to test it and this is kind of messy cycle which repeats itself um yeah so, so so adam is this is this a is this a, a design uh pattern which comes from the business world this is design in general this is de design thinking this is not 
it can be used in uh, business world, but the core of the of this thing is design as a discipline. Discipline, see those words. <laughs> design as a field is built on this idea that you're just solving the problem with the design. And this this is applied. Uh, this can be applied on rocket ships to websites to software design to shoes making. Yeah. So uh, how can we push this to something more actionable? So usually when you come up with idea, you just think this is going to be so great. I just have, have idea and then I designed it and somebody going to code it and it's going to be great. And, uh, and that's not usually what happens. Usually it's very messy. Uh, messy stuff and sometimes and um, it can also lead to fail and there is a framework which should help us to make this process less painful but it's still kind of messy so um yeah so it's built on this framework that you always should build the context of the feature or whatever you're trying to do. So when I say context, I mean, you just think like very broadly, why somebody needs this feature, why it's useful and how it's going to be used and what is the big picture of this, this feature. And after that, we can start with this this whole process of understanding the problem on the on the fundamental level. So, for example, let's say uh, I don't know if we are going to talk about this today, but we are thinking about developing the new feature, which is multi-page or multi-artboard or multi-frame. It depends from what what field are we coming from. And in this in this scenario, you would say, okay, we have a problem. User wants multi pages, but we should should think like why, what he needs, what how is it going to use it, uh, what's what's the situation right now, like how how many how how it works in the Inkscape. Um, I'm, I'm not going through this whole process with the pages because we still are not finished with that. So yeah, that's step two. And then after that, you should gather all the requirements you need for the process. Uh, so what does it mean? Like what kind of technology we will need? Uh, what UX we will need? What uh, what testing we are going to need, um, what exact, what are the exact resources we are going to need for solving this problem. After that, we know, know what we need and after that we can define the solution. So solution should be basically the raw idea how to solve this. In this in this state, you sh it's always good to have a roadmap or at least some kind of tech document, which should be like, okay, this feature at the end, if it's successful, we need to do this, 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 every single step. So like in, again, in example of the multi-board, we, we would say like, okay, if this feature is finished and successful, you can create our boards, edit them, you can export to specific format of your choosing. So let's say PDF or, whatever and if we if we get this we we did a good job i would say um and after that there is another silk circle this is the first time we start designing so after that you can start designing and making sketches and wireframes and uh, whatever else this this feature needs after that you should prototype, test this prototype, iterate on this uh, prototype and go to back to the design. So in this stage, 
uh, it's not linear. You can always come back to the previous stages because during the prototyping, you found out that uh, some feature, some part of the feature is very hard to do or it's not practical or whatever. You get the new insight and you should again go through, through the steps and go until the project is successful. So yeah, um, and after that, this workflow should help build the better product because it's built on some foundation of understanding of the root of the problem. So you can always come back and see like, okay, why is this failing? What are we missing? Because we are, we also have these back steps we can you can see and use as a guide. Adam, um, would this be a process that we would want to practice uh, in things like, for instance, the multi-page project? Yeah, I, yeah, I think, I, yeah, I think like this is the best place to start with this. The there's few problems with this, and one is the nature of open source projects that we really cannot force anybody to do the part, and it's not the most practical thing just to get dropped in the middle of something. So so you, you absolutely can force somebody to do something, but you have to pay them. Oh yes. Yeah. So well, so the problem is not the problem is not that you cannot like get things to happen. It's the pro the problem is that you have to understand uh, who who is giving the resources. And in the case of a volunteer, it's their own resources. So that's why they get to make the decision about how to spend their own resources, which means that you have to collaborate with them and convince them to spend their own resources. Yeah, uh, just to, I think Jorge is saying this is, this is the multi-page thing is too big. To be honest, like we already doing this, but we are not really aware of this. And I, I, th I think we should also get developers on this side that if we do it like more structurally or more with the design thinking, it would be in the end more cleaner and easier to develop. So I have a have an answer specifically about like selecting which thing to try first as a practice. Um, we will be discussing all of the future UX issues that we currently have um, the session after next. So after the Google Summer of Code presentation. Um, so if you want to hang around, we, we can actually yeah, have yeah, a think I, about which one is the best. Yeah, I, I will stay here for sure. Yeah, this is the thing. Like, um, I'm not saying like, oh, we need to be super strict about this process I and mean, we need to use it 100%. The thing is, as I said, we already kind of do this because if, if you go to the issue uh, of the multi-page uh, uh, feature, like you can see this kind of discussions is already happening there. Like we are trying to understand the problem on the technical level, but also on the user level. Like the only, only problem is that I think we are not totally on one page that this is the way it features should be developed from that, the developer. That's, a, that's an excellent pun, Adam. I have to point, point that out. Uh, sorry, it's excellent. We, 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 it's an excellent pun. We're, we're, we're all not on one page about multi-page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't plan for this pun, but it in, in works. Uh, yeah, so that's the that's thing which is kind of... Uh, like, I, I cannot force anybody to agree with this. It's just... But I think, and I would say like the most companies use this, like it would be very useful. I said that a few days ago to invite uh, people from other open source projects, how they solve this issue of like developing features as, as a... Could, could I invite uh, Van Tyl to come and, and talk and say the, the full um, oh, yeah, comment sure. that, that, that they have? Because I think it would be valuable. Come in. But yeah, um, so like I'm not saying let's do this for everything and want to be super structured and stuff like that, but this would for sure help the process 
at least have this foundation of understanding that the features should stand on some ground. Hey, so um, two layers of uh, muting. It took me a while to undo them. What I've been trying to say in the com uh, in the chat and also on the side from time to time uh, on the UX channel is uh, a bit of my background. First, I've been a consumer of design thinking literature and an active participant at uh, Google-oriented workshops, like people who are closely working with uh, Google employees on design workshops, and I'm quite close to their methods. And I have used them before in smaller projects, but what I've uh, been trying to uh, put a point on in the uh, chat is that there are inherent assumptions that might not fit actually in Scape as a project. One of them is that, uh, as Martin uh, says from time to time, you can make developers do things if you pay them. And the assumption is that uh, in most design thinking successful companies, they have an practically unlimited pool of resources, and we don't. Uh, this could be money, people, uh, the almost scream in the first session of for G, uh, GTK CSS developers. Well, probably they're countable on two hands on all over the planet, like real people who can call themselves GTK CSS developers. Uh, yeah, the second I, I... one. The second one, which is a bit more closer to what you've been trying to say, is that uh, users in the, the focus on design thinking is not on numbers. If it's on actually getting the biases and the assumptions that the user makes when they're trying to make a uh, non-obfuscated task, that means they don't usually uh, have a lot of experience or at all with the program that they use. Uh, and if we would be able to get designers who are venturous enough to use other programs except the Adobe Suite, because there are not many that uh, usually use like four types of programs, like they try the Affinity, the Adobe Suite, the uh, Figmas out there, and Inkscape. Uh, those would be our target for testing that, that would relieve uh, some things that we might not see for uh, experienced Inkscape users. And that is mostly us because we are even closer than experienced users being. I, sh I should also point out the that um, there's, a, there's a couple of different pools. So when you think about Illustrator, Figma, uh, Affinity Designer, uh, Escape, that's only one section of individuals. So you also have to think about um, some of the other pools of um, ways in which Inkscape is used that, is not within that pool as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, so before I even started, uh, actually, I haven't realized until I got to the developer groups and the general Inkscape user chat on Rocket Chat that there are a lot of people who are using Inkscape not as a design tool but as a practical uh, CADing CAD tool, and that would be another major group that we would have to. Uh, assess but as i have almost no experience there and i find it quite interesting maybe somebody more experienced could actually identify who is there but what i'm trying to say that is that the uh, there are different tests that we should think about some are with experienced people that are using inkscape day by day or well week by week you get the point but some are with uh, actual designers who are open to try it and maybe we would find out the most from them. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, actually, both points are pretty good because that's the thing. Like, I don't I don't know if this model is going to work on the open source project. That's why I'm saying like there has to be some less anarchic way how to how to do this because right now it it feels like it's just pure chaos and stuff gets done just by the accident to be honest i think i think honestly if you created a stru structure adam which was um simple enough for people to use or at least you had a, a a guide that people could follow or a video that they could watch to find out how to interact with it if you just keep on banging the drum 
right? So you turn up, you're present, you're informing, you're teaching con consistently enough, the whole culture of the community will change and you'll find that people will be doing things in this direction. Um, and the part of this is community management, um, which is not a skill that uh, I appreciate that a lot of people have from any other industry. It's just something that's unique kind of to, to free and open source pro projects. But it is this thing where you have to be able to be patient and teach and this new person comes in and then you teach them and then this new person comes in and you teach them and then it's this constant thing and as long as the structure that you create is simple enough for a lower level of individual to um, do part of the work on let's say one of these steps for instance and there's a good there's a solid way in which they can go to GitLab and then they they fill in this exact box and then you know they press the button and then that's it that their job is done I think this is possible to do yeah the, the thing is like I, I don't think this is impossible to do the problem is like i still think like part of this process is still happening on the gitlab and in the rocket jet my other problem is that we just it's not even a problem we don't have enough uh, ux designers i would say like we have enough of them or okay there is not never enough but we have some i would say the bigger problem is that we are just designing and this stuff are kind of never pushed f any further just by like we get to the design and discussion and maybe some usability concerns and some technical stuff which is all great that we can talk about this but after that point like we should start doing it so we should basically start rapid prototyping and this is the part when it falls apart because i feel like developers are usually not interested in doing this stuff if they are not interested in in this idea from the beginning yeah so i think i think the step that you're missing uh, that might be unique to open source projects is recruitment and yeah. um it's because it's because you don't have a you don't have a set of employees so there has to be a a, a task there where you either have to convince developers of your amazing idea or you have to figure out how to marshal the re resources now yeah basically who who is the one driving the the situation, right? So if the if the team that's driving the situation is developers, right? So developer comes to the UX team and says, "Oh, I have an, an idea for a feature I, I'm going to develop. I need the UX team's help." Then it's the developer who's dr driving the bus, and so you, you you your complaint about them not continuing is is valid, right? You, they've asked you to do a piece of work, you've helped them with their work, and then they've not pro processed it forwards, right? For whatever reason. But on the other hand, if it's the UX team that, that makes a decision about a feature that it, need, that it wants to see or, or, or there's some other process that's driving it forwards, then somebody has to take charge and say, no, the, the, I'm going to drive this. Even though I, no, I'm not a developer, I'm going to drive it. And, that, and that's where you have to do the recruitment and all of the extra sort of community work. Okay, so basically, I would say maybe we just need to add one more step of the recruiting somewhere in the process. Yeah. Oh, something that I might add to uh, a thing that Martin said a few minutes ago is that to have a more practical framework, I do have the resources and I could share them for the actual uh, real life user testing. So a lot of exercises that would, would take uh, biases uh, that will push biases in front of our eyes that would make things more clear when testing but that means that we somebody would uh, somebody from the ux team preferably would actually gather two or three people and i don't know make amends with them and say well for the next 30 minutes if you would like to let's go through this i'm gonna try to make it as a pleasant of experience as i can with you and uh, you will help me understand what I'm passionate about more. On the other side, about uh, what Adam says, the prototyping phase, it's, from my point of view, uh, as prototyping is usually understood, it's impossible to do for Inkscape. It is uh, too much work to actually do something uh, as a minimum viable uh, thing that you could present to a tester at one point and then revise it, maybe radically change it into something else. So the prototypes should ha should be reduced to something that is actually from a prototyping device program. So maybe we could move artboards into Figma and prototype there. It would be so much less time consuming. 
So, so when it comes to prototype type typing, speaking as a developer, um, we definitely do cycle through uh, prototype prototype typing, especially when it comes to like the functionality of how the code should be structured. Um, but part of a good prototype when you are doing it, like real prototype and typing is that you have to be able to throw things away. Um, now on a technical side, we do, we do actually do that, right? So we'll, we'll program a thing for whatever reason, it's inconsistent or it does, just doesn't work. And so we, we literally git reset dash dash hard and the code is gone, right? So while that hurts a bit, it, it happens even in the open source world. Um, on the other hand, the way in which we've tried to do certain fe features, or at least when I'm trying to design something, is that if there's if there's a way to break it down so that the feature can be described as smaller functionalities, that if you had this functionality and this functionality alone, they would still be helpful, right? They'd still be a, a net benefit. Um, but together, taken together, they're they're way more powerful. And this is more like a like evolution rather than rather than prototyping, which is where you're like designing things from a from a um, you know a blue board style. Um, and and evolution is is pretty much how a lot of open source works, and because you you never you never destroy uh, the, the 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 code base, right? So Inkscape itself never gets destroyed and then recreated like it's a new product. It always evolves into a new form, even if it changes over time to be something completely new. Uh, so it's worth bearing in mind like we we do have cycles, but the cycles are different because we tend to try and make things that. Are persistent and, and and are small enough to be persistent so that we can get them in so uh, I um, that's why I really liked uh, the late when you showed it to me because it allowed me as a I mean I, I'm not even a UX designer but kind of work in design related stuff so it allowed me as a designer to to try things that were afterwards actually had a connection to the code itself. So it's really easy to, to do prototyping on that because it's a tool that can be used by both, by designers and coders. So it, I think that's a very interesting uh, tool in this case. Or there are, of course, other things you can do for prototyping user experience, like mockups and these kind of things. But I think this, this was interesting for me as an experience, for example. Yeah, and I'm happy to show anybody those kinds of tools to, to get them into um, being able to help out because that was very helpful to, uh, being able to help with that about screen. Yeah, but these tools are still kind of limited, right? And glides. Yeah, that's true. E even a text editor, though, has its limitations. Of course, everything has its limitation, but um, you cannot really. Like we probably couldn't do anything with Glades for for the for the multi pages, which is arguably a big feature, but still. <laughs> Definitely not. Anything. So so the rule is anything that's on the can canvas is is not GTK, um, but anything that's off the can canvas it usually is. Um, so like the cam like multi pages is a, is a problem that um, because it is about the SVG file and it's about the interaction. Very little glade would be involved. Uh, there might be some though. Don't don't discount it completely. Like if we need a toolbar, for instance, like a page tool, uh, that that's an excellent uh, example. Could we for for this feature specifically? Could we uh, start with a, with a understanding the problem? Could we use some kind of um, I say that uh, like what's the word? Sorry, like questions we ask the, the oh, users, yeah. like uh, the, polls. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the this this is just diagram. It's like not the actual. Yeah, I know, diagram. I know. There is for sure. There is many many techniques how to how to under, better understand the problem. Like uh, we can we can share resources on this after after we finish this in Rocket Chat. Like if if we are interested in doing this, but basically it's about asking the right questions and asking the right people. That's the easiest and simplest answer answer to that. But there this is, is a twenty yeah. minute warning. I was seeing the challenge also to keep all like, like a certain team involved throughout the whole process. Because this may take time, and 
usually contributors are some of them are very uh, like continuous in the way they're, they're working with the project but some of them just come and go I'm one of them for example not even a contributor actually but so uh, it's I think one challenge is that like how you keep someone in the process uh, along the, the different steps or when jo someone joins back from for some time off the, the project uh, he can see where where the where we are on this process and how he can join or like we are already past the first prototype and we're not really getting back to this other phase or i don't know so for me yeah like that could be a challenge also yeah that's that's kind of problem we currently face because as you said like you contribute and then lives happen because this is this is just volunteering and you come back to it and you you can see that maybe it moved without you maybe it did not so yeah this is kind of problem i i don't have answer though the the problem is that if there is as as martin often says if there's nobody driving the project project is not to, not going to be done by itself and sometimes even if you are driving the project it can just fail on the any of these steps that's kind of sucky part of of contributing so what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that uh, people who especially in non-developer teams have the ability to talk to somebody um, about um, getting the resources that they need uh, i'm going to open myself up and say that you know if you want to come to me as a mentor and, and and just talk to me about like whether you have a you have a project that you're trying to drive right you, you're the person who is trying to make it work sometimes what's needed is just to have the permissions um to be able to 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 take a thing or to change a thing and i'm willing to i'm willing to to try and make sure that you can get those permissions um i want to make sure that people who are contributing to inkscape uh, feel included and they feel empowered to be able to make the ch changes that they need but i understand that like not all changes can be done by one individual um so making sure that the if 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 the mentorship is needed to try and help you like an introduction to more developers or, or to different individuals that might be able to help um I'll, I'll help as best i can yeah but on the other side like you also don't want to just bug developers because you just want some feature in well it's not it's not necessarily about bugging developer but it is about thinking about what resources are available and what the current uh, situation is right so if we know for instance <clears throat> during the the feature freeze portion of the cycle if you came to an Inkscape developer and said hey I, I'm interested in developing this new fe feature um, the response you're going to get from the project as a whole is hang on do like do as much work as you want on, on on your own thing, but understand like the 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 merging it in and getting it into the Inkscape is going to be impossible right now. Um, but on on the other hand, I think there is a case to be made that um, making sure that that you, people who want to drive features, who want to drive fixes, even uh, who are not developers, need to be able to be confident that they can they can um, talk to developers. Uh, ask them for help, ask them for favors, um, try and figure out like what is the resource that's needed in this particular case to get a particular developer to, to help them. Um, that's 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 relationships and that's community. That's the thing that I'm willing to help with. Yeah, but still, in, in this case, I think it's just walk a mole game of like trying to push the priorities of the developers be, because we still have just limited number of them so well I, okay so um the the project itself has its own priorities as well right so if your feature is a part of the grand scheme of inkscape right we know there's a lot a lot of users that need it one of the things that we're trying to do and this is a part of other parts of the pro project is to put together a way of contracting uh to pay developers to work on specific things that inkscape itself needs and that is another form of resourcing right so it's another way in which the project as a whole can make sure that uh, there are resources available but it doesn't have to be that way there's also ways for instance if you get uh, some somebody that's not in the inkscape pro project say they work on some other thing you could talk to that developer and say, look, I, I need help on Inkscape. I know that you could do it, uh, but you've, there's no reason why you should. 
So is there anything that I could offer you in exchange, right? Some design counseling, some other thing that where you can trade off. Um, so there are, there are, but this requires you to, to kind of have, you know, uh, contacts, people who you can talk to, and that's not always available. Like you may, may be fresh into things, get fun project, you don't know anybody. Um, so I think over time you'll, you'll get experience on how to, um, navigate the different kinds of resources that you're that you're you will need to to drive a specific thing obviously you're right adam like not everything will be possible uh but i think that there's ways in which we can be very fle flexible and and figure out um you know lots of individuals who want to contribute to inkscape do have resources available it's just that they don't um don't have focus uh i find myself a lot of the time not developing something in Inkscape simply because I don't have cheerleaders. This sounds utterly bizarre, but I'm sitting there going, oh, well, I'll, I'll guess I'll spend three hours on Twitter or I'll do some client work or I'll do something else because um, I'm just not enthused. Uh, and so like if, if a person came to me and enthused me, I have no idea how they would do, 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 do that, but let's assume that that was possible. I, I'd probably work on their thing. Um, so it, it's not uh, it's not just like the, the, the like all the resources are, are tied up doing doing things. Um, I don't think that's always the case, um, but it is worth like as a project as to think thinking about different ways in which we can um, enable people to, to to get things done. Ah, we have a volunteer as a cheerleader. Yeah. Excellent. You want you have one. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree, but still, like it's just squeezing end of the bottle because, at least from my point of view, I kind of feel guilty about doing this just to cheer or bug or whatever developer. Well, it, it definitely does depend upon the way in which you approach a problem, right? So if you are approaching it in terms of, uh, I think you developer owe me a fate, like I think you owe me to, to develop this thing. I've spent all of this time working for Inkscape and you as a fellow Inkscape person should care about this thing. That might not be the best approach. Um, yeah. it, never, it never hurts to butter someone up. I don't know whether that phrase makes sense in foreign <laughs> languages, I'm sorry. Uh, no, Inevitably, uh, I think Adam is a lot uh, really concerned. Uh, I think that this feature, or I and some other people think that this feature will look good and help make things easier, but that eventually doesn't. Uh, Vantag, uh, we we're having a bit of trouble with your with your uh, audio. Could you I, could you repeat or type it in? Oh, oh sorry. Oh. I hope it doesn't. Yeah, we are losing you. I was typing it that. Or yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, it looks like the uh, connection is um, not not great on your side. You have to type it. I, I, I am sorry. I, I wish we could uh, um, get everybody. It's interesting actually how the audio in Big Big Blue Button works some, sometimes because in um, Jitsi it tends to just uh, uh, fall down in quality, but in, in Big Blue Button it tends to cut out. I'm actually, so I should say, I'm actually sharing my internet connection from, from my phone uh, instead of my, my regular Wi Fi because I found it was, was better for Big Blue Button. Interesting. My internet is not that great, but looks like it's working fine. Okay. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah, and I, I... I have one issue which I often see is that uh, sometimes people want feature which is very destructive to other workflows. That's kind of big picture problem of Inkscape because it has so many uses. As it has been said before, some people use it for illustration, some for UX design or UI design to be more precise. And some people use it for CAD. And, and we had some people uh, in uh, GitLab who use Inkscape for uh, 
origami, which is quite interesting, and they have their special needs. And even even I am sometimes guilty of this, just dismissing people. Like, okay, nobody uses this feature, and then somebody explain how they use it, and then I'm like, okay, I'm wrong. Some people use this feature very often, and they would be sad if it was it was gone. So yeah, we also have to work on this. Be less destructive and or okay we can be destructive but we have to think really hard what we are trying to destroy i'm actually um pro destruction uh other developers are not so keen um you know i to, to tell you a very quick story about the extensions repository so when we we, we needed to do um we need to revisit how the python extensions were done um, it was such a pro such a mess of, of accumulated issues that um, I had to I had to essentially destroy everything, which was very messy and it took a long time and a lot of hours of work to to, to rebuild because it like the, the I had to reprogram a lot of the extensions. Um, so it, it, the problem is not necessarily the destructive element itself, and of course I had to convince all the other developers to trust trust me for a while, which was. Um, tricky um but the it's the it's the commitment to be able to do the rebuilding and to and to you know meet it to the end especially if it's a large change yeah i totally get it because this is so old or software so there's lots of old code and which is not just old as it's old and bad it's just somebody built it and it's there and if you just destroy it and then you don't replace it with something better, it's kind of hurtful for that person who contributed that code. So I am empathic to that. That's the thing. Like we need to be like destruction is good, but think carefully if you can do it better than what you distracted, I guess. I'm I'm gonna give a 10, 10 minute warning. Okay. Um yeah, but I think this is the the most topics I wanted to talk about. Like I have this huge list of the problems with the UI and UX and Inkscape, but I'm not really sure if it's even worth it to talk about it. Uh, we, we can definitely, uh, if they're small, we can add them to the paper cuts list if you think that they fit there. Um, if it's a features type things, we can talk about them in the future features list. But there's also a section at the end of this hack hack fest where it'll be more free free form if you want. Okay, yeah. Uh, in that case, because there are really broad topics, it's not like there are paper cuts or simple paper cuts. It's like okay, just for example, I have one of my paper cuts is uh, spin boxes, which is really complex problem, which is tying back to to the GDK and also the usability and also buttons and stuff and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. definitely a, a situation where you have prototyping. Um, and we'll see later, I think, about the, the panels. Uh, I know there's been a lot of prototype typing. At the previous Hackfest that was held in person in California, the, the, that, uh, that was the first time I saw a prototype for the new panels. What was that, two years ago? And it was a, at least a year ago. And so it's 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 taking a long time, but I think that those prototypes really helped on understand the problem better. Uh, these panels are already in Inkscape or not? No, these are not. No, this were these these uh, prototypes Tav created were uh, separate. They're separate pro programs in order to try out widgets and and, and you know work uh, on them. Have... And that is really a, a prototype, right? Because there's no way that is Inkscape. It's going to be th thrown away eventually. Yeah. Um, but that might be a, a, a way of working for this spin button problem so that you can finally figure out what it is. Yeah, but I, I think we will see something similar in a few minutes, I would say. Yeah. Actually, I, I'm not sure how, how far this his progress is on, on this, but I think we will find out. So, yeah. so one one thing I one thing I was interested in, Adam, is that um, for the for the last two hours that we have available on the Hackfest today, uh, is it is it possible that we could pick um, one of the user experience issues that we currently have 
and work through the steps. Like even if we're retreading the the um, the issue, right? So like the issue has a bunch of things that have happened to it. But if we use that as a basis and just work through this print process, would it help people understand um, like how this print process works? Yeah, we can we can try it. Like okay, oof, this. This, this notes grew from last time I saw them. Okay, um, <laughs> um, let's let's say let's let's take your issue. Um, like this is not totally built on this because this framework is more like from from building all features or whatever. But I think it still can apply. Uh, this object to path uh, it's at the wrong place. So first, uh, we take this. This concept that you find that this this button just is at wrong it's at wrong place for you. Um, so yeah, first we build the context of this. So you are, and if if we are take, take, talking about context, we are talking really broad topic. Like we are speaking. Okay, what's your background? Uh, what industry you work in and what are the software do you use and why do why is this problem specific to you or is it big or or is there a historical reason why this is there or here or, or stuff like that so yeah and after we don't we just need some information we at, at this point it's we are not trying to say like oh it's your fault because you you used other software which blah 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 we're just gathering the information for the stage two so stage two is the understanding the problem so basically your problem is that you are trying to you are saying you want to move button from one place to another but your real problem is you want to convert uh you want to convert object to path and you get confused on the way to do it so basically it means maybe this button should should be totally at a different place maybe it doesn't even need to be uh at any menu maybe you can just click it and have this option I, i'm not saying right solution to this problem i'm just saying like you should try to understand this problem on the fundamental level you are just trying to convert this text or circle or whatever to the to the path so after that uh, when we understand this problem uh, we gather the requirements so we should know like okay what kind of gtk we need to do it we can can we can we just edit xml files in uh, and in the menus and just swap it or whatever. Uh, we will need to know how we're going to test it and how many users do we need. Uh, and yeah, so basically, do we need designers on the board for solving this or blah, blah, blah. So after that, we are trying to find a solution. So obvious solution is to just take the button and put it to the new place, which this may be good solution, bad solution. Maybe we can rename button. We can change the icon. Maybe we can put it totally different place. Maybe during this process, we will find out like, okay, this is the pain point, but we kind of, this is the best solution we can find out and we shouldn't do anything, which is always an option. But let's say we found a solution that we need to move this button to the new place. To, to the object menu. So at this point, we should have some design, some mockup, which like, okay, what is the place where it's going to be laid down? Should it be uh, the first button or maybe next to the rotation and uh, flipping horizontal vertical because it make logical sense because it's like, at least it's operation some, some, somehow because other things are dials and groups and blah, blah, blah. And after that, we should prototype, or to be honest, not even prototype, just do it and we can test it and do this circle until we are happy with the with the new feature. 
Excellent. So um, that, that about wraps it up for this uh, meeting, Adam. Um, uh, before I before I take the presentation, is, is there anything you want to you want to finish up with? Yeah, drink more water, kids. <laughs> <laughs> thank thank you very much, Adam, and, and thank you for the presentation. I think we've all learned a bit more about how to do design and uh, like some of the problems that we'll face. No problem. I hope it helps. <laughs>